sorry about that. My uh, phone got a telephone call and there's no way to not have that stop your video. Okay, that was a big exciting spot that it stuck us in. All right, so Harry, Harry Hermione was shrinking against the wall opposite, looking like she was about to faint. The troll was advancing on her, knocking the sinks off the walls as it went. Confuse it, Harry said desperately to Ron, and seizing a tap, he threw it as hard as he could against the wall. The tap is like the part of the sink that you turn to turn it on. The troll stopped for a few feet, a few feet from Hermione. It lumbered around, blinking to see what had made the noise. Its mean little eyes saw Harry. It hesitated, then made for him instead, lifting its club as he went. Oi, pea brain, yelled Ron from the other side of the chamber, and he threw a metal pipe at it. The troll didn't even seem to notice the pipe hitting its shoulder, but it heard the yell and paused again, turning its ugly snout towards Ron instead, giving Harry time to run around it. Come on, run, run, Harry yelled at Hermione, trying to pull her toward the door, but she couldn't move. She was still flat against the wall, her mouth open with terror. The shouting and the echo seemed to be driving the troll berserk. That means like crazy. It roared again and started towards Ron, who was nearest and had no way to escape. Harry then did something that was both very brave and very foolish. He took a great running jump and managed to fasten his arms around the troll's neck from behind. The troll couldn't feel Harry hanging there, but even a troll will notice if you stick a long bit of wood up, up its nose. And Harry's wand had still been in his hand when he jumped. It had gone straight up one of the troll's nostrils. Howling with pain, the troll twisted and flailed its club. With Harry clinging on for dear life, any second the troll was going to rip him off or catch him with a terrible blow from the club. Hermione had sunk to the floor in fright. Ron pulled out his own wand. Not knowing what he was going to do, he heard himself cry the first spell that came into his head. When Guardian Leviosa! The club flew suddenly out of the troll's hand rose high, high up into the air, turned slowly over, and dropped with a sickening crack onto the owner's head. The troll swayed on the spot and then fell flat on its face with a thud that made the whole room tremble. Harry got to his feet. He was shaking and out of breath. Ron was standing there with his wand still raised, staring at what he had done. It was Hermione who spoke first. Is it dead? I think, I don't think so, said Harry. I think it's just been knocked out. He bent down and pulled his wand out of the troll's nose. It was covered in what looked like lumpy gray glue. Ugh, troll boogers. He wiped it on the troll's trousers, on the troll's own, own pants. A sudden slamming and loud footsteps made the three of them look up. They hadn't realized what a racket they had been making, but of course, someone downstairs must have heard the crashes and the troll's roars. A moment later, Professor McGonagall had come bursting into the room, closely followed by Snape, with Quirrell bringing up the rear. Quirrell took one look at the troll, troll let out a faint whimper, <laughs> and sat quickly down on the toilet, clutching his heart. Snape bent over the troll. Professor McGonagall was looking at Ron and Harry. Harry had never seen her look so angry. Her lips were white. Hopes of winning 50 points for Gryffindor faded quickly from Harry's mind. What on earth were you thinking of? said Professor McGonagall with cold fury in her voice. Harry looked at Ron, who was still standing with his wand in the air. You're lucky you weren't killed. Why aren't you in your dormitory? Snape gave Harry a swift, piercing look. Harry looked at the floor. He wished Ron would put his wand down. Then a small voice came out of the shadows. Please, Professor McGonagall, they were looking for me. Miss Granger? Hermione had managed to get to her feet at last. I went looking for the troll because I I thought I could deal with it on my own, you know, because I've, I've read all about them. Ron dropped his wand. Hermione Granger telling a downright lie to a teacher? If they hadn't found me, I'd be dead now. Harry stuck his wand up its nose, and Ron knocked it out with its own club. They didn't have to come and fetch anyone. It was about, they didn't have time to come and fetch anyone. It was about to finish me off when they arrived. Harry and Ron tried to look as though this story wasn't new to them. Well, in that case, said Professor McGonagall, staring at the three of them, Miss Granger, you foolish girl, how could you think of tackling a mountain troll on your own? Hermione hung her head. Harry was speechless. Hermione was the last person to do anything against the rules, and here she was, pretending she had to get them out of trouble. It was as if Snape had started handing out sweets, like nothing could be crazier than that. Miss Granger, 
Five points will be taken from Gryffindor for this, said Professor McGonagall. I'm very disappointed in you. If you're not hurt at all, you'd better get off to Gryffindor Tower. Students are finishing the feast in their houses. Hermione left. Professor McGonagall turned to Harry and Ron. Well, I still say you were lucky, but not many first years could have taken on a full-grown mountain troll. You each win Gryffindor five points. Professor Dumbledore will be informed of this. You may go. They hurried out of the chamber and didn't speak at all until they had climbed two floors up. It was a relief to be away from the smell of the troll, quite apart from anything else. We should have gotten more than ten points, Ron grumbled. Five, you mean, once she's taken off Hermione's. Good of her to get us out of trouble like that, Ron admitted. Mind you, we did save her. She might not have needed saving if we hadn't locked the thing in with her, Harry reminded him. They had reached the portrait of the fat lady. Pick snout, they said, and entered. Remember, that's the password. The common room was packed and noisy. Everyone was eating the food that had been sent up. Hermione, however, stood alone by the door, waiting for them. There was a very embarrassed pause. Then, none of them looking at each other, they all said, thanks, and hurried off to get plates. But from that moment on, Hermione Granger became their friend. There are some things you can't share without ending up liking each other, and knocking out a 12-foot mountain troll is one of them. And that's how the three of them became the best of friends. All right, that's the end of chapter 10. We will read chapter 11 next, which is called Quidditch. Oh, that's going to be exciting to read. I can't wait to hear all about how they play the game. Have a great day. Bye.